Hello everybody, it is the Doctor. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online Free to Play Edition in 2015. I have just beamed down to, to uh, ESD here. In the last mission, we became Lieutenant Commander 10, well, almost Lieutenant Commander 10. We need to report to Admiral Quinn's office, see the man himself in charge, and get our first promotion, our first grade level increase to level 10, Lieutenant Commander. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to go pick out our new ship and get it ready for combat. So I'm looking forward to this, so I'm going to pretend here I am, Rami Summers, fresh off the transporter pad, greeting all of ESD. I was going to do an emote, but then I realized, uh, free to play, watch this. You cannot send zone chat with a newly created account. So there's another free to play uh, little thing there that it keeps you from doing when you uh, create a new account. I'm not sure if it's actually like that on the veteran or lifetimer side if you create a new account straight up, but apparently cannot send zone chat with a newly created account. I don't know when that unlocks or when that will let me send zone messages. I don't know. But right now I can't send any chat messages, so I find that interesting. Alright, so here I am. We are coming straight through to um, this wonderful waterfall area. Jogging our way toward Quinn. I come toward Quinn's office. I stand. I look at the man eye to eye. I see you, Quinn. <laughs> Let's uh, take a seat in his chair, shall we? Uh, sir? So, you asked me to come here, um, uh, what, what do you have to say? Actually, I need to get closer to him. We'll stand in front of him. Yes, sir, reporting for duty. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. I'm extremely pleased by your progress. In light of your contributions to Starfleet, you should get a new starship. Well, I thank you. Visit Lieutenant Laurel to see what ships you are eligible to fly and to requisition a new vessel. Speak to Lieutenant Laurel in the shipyard to requisition a new starship. Gold members, you've earned a retraining token that you can use to change the distribution of your skill points. But I am not a gold member, so do I not receive that? I guess not. But I will receive a free costume change. If I wish to go put on a new costume, like change my pips or whatever, to Lieutenant Commander, that's good. So the Lieutenant Commander is in progress. Until I go to the shipyard. Well, okay. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Admiral Quinn. <laughs> I will now go to the shipyard. Thank you and goodbye. Before I head to the shipyard, uh, one thing I am going to do since we're getting a new ship now. Let's rename this ship to the Miranda. And, uh, or we'll just, yeah, Miranda's fine. I was going to say light cruiser, Miranda, whatever. Same thing. Um... And uh, that way I can use Andromeda for another ship name if I wanted to. Uh, I may choose a different ship name. I'll have to think about that. Um, let's go to the shipyard. Actually, well, try, let's try to do this in order. Let's go to the shipyard. Let's see what Lieutenant Laurel has to say. Laurel, where are you? There you are. So, uh, yeah, Admiral Quinn told me to speak to you. What do you have to say? Congratulations on making Lieutenant Commander. The Admiral has given his blessing for you to choose a ship appropriate to your new stature. Take a look at my store. The starships that are approved for your rank are listed. I'm here to help. Let's see. Let's get a new starship. Actually, let's read about the different types first. You've got cruisers, escorts, science vessels, shutter, shuttle, shutters. Yeah, let's fly a shutter. And other ships. Let's read first about the cruisers because that's what I had here previously. Cruisers are generally the largest, most resilient ships in Starfleet. They have massive warp cores which generate surplus power for their subsystems. Cruisers have additional engineering, bridge officer stations, and console modification slots. They also have access to advanced comma rays. Cruisers adapt well to most situations. 
They can support other ships in a fleet or operate well on their own. So you'll notice here it says cruisers have an additional engineer bridge officer station and console modification slot. So that tends to lead cruisers t more toward the engineering side of things. Escorts. Escorts have the firepower needed to defend the Federation. Escorts are small, which means they don't have room for extensive engineering or science facilities, but their weaponry means that their crew is seldom threatened, and their speed and maneuverability makes them hard to hit. Escorts have extra tactical bridge officer stations and console modifications. Escorts can also equip cannons, a type of weapon that is unavailable for most other Starfleet vessels. So, as you can see, escorts have a tactical lean to them. And science vessels. Science vessels don't have the firepower of escorts, but they have the most advanced technology in Starfleet. Science vessels have the most powerful shields and additional science bridge officer stations and console modification slots. All science vessels have subsystem targeting and sensor analysis. So, as you can see, these are for science. Now, you don't have to stick with that. You can mix them up. A tactical can use a, a cruiser. A science person can use an escort. It doesn't matter, really. But uh, there are definitely different leans. Like, like it says there, you know, one has more engineering officer slots, one has more tactical, or one has more science. The science ship is the only one that, for example, has a commander tactical and tactical ships are the only one I mean commander science and commander uh, let me start over again because that was utterly confusing tactical ships are the only ones that have commander tactical stations and science ships are the only ones that have commander science stations and engineering have commander engineering what that means is that's the third or tier three commander ability for a bridge officer on that starship so if you want a commander tactical power, you have to use a tactical ship. If you want a commander engineering power, you need an engineering and then commander science for with a science ship. That's why I like to just go ahead and match up the ship with the type of character I'm using. So if I'm using an S, if I'm using a tactical character, to me logically, as Spock would say, it just it's logic that um, the tactical an escort ship would be what a tactical person uses and just to stick with that. I don't have to, I could continue using a cruiser if I wanted in this game so there's freedom to have uniqueness and do whatever you want but as far as from like a purity standpoint what matches I think that's the escort so that's what I'm going to go down the path of and use on this character being a tactical character is the escort. Now I can look at lieutenant commander and we can look at all the different ones here so here's the cruiser that you get now i love this cruiser it's iconic classic this is basically the retrofit or refit enterprise a that they flew in the movies the original star trek movies it's the constitution class it's very cool i mean it's certainly iconic and if you just want to fly iconic ships this would be the path you want to go down. This is the next iconic ship, you know, in the path. Unless you purchased, like, the uh, Constitution Cruiser, which you can also get as a starter ship. But again, that's Zen. I don't want to spend Zen, but you could have got the Constitution Cruiser. They also have the Enterprise, the NX. Uh, that's an option as well. These are Zen, obviously, the light science vessel. And you, nobody wants to do is use a shuttle as your first ship uh, so lieutenant commander these are our options they are the cruiser the constitution the escort which is sabers sabers saw extensive action in the dominion war two sister ships the rapier and ushan classes were created when starfleet rapidly expanded their construction after the outbreak of the war with the klingon empire the escort configuration includes the Sabre, Rapier, and Ushan classes. You get plus 15 power to weapons, and it can load cannons. So this is what's unique about escorts. Escorts can use cannons, and cruisers and science vessels cannot. So that makes them a little more powerful, but they are like glass cannons, as people call them. These are tiny ships. They're maneuverable, but they also break easy. So that's what you got to keep in mind. That's how they really differ from cruisers or science vessels. They break real easy. Their shields are not as good. Their hull strength is not as good. 
but they have a lot of firepower. Or there's the science vessel, which is the, um, the Nova, or Aurora, and Quasar classes. Uh, now there are Z store sh uh, variants of these, which are a little upgraded. If you wanted to spend Z store monies, you could get the science vessel refit, a cruiser refit, which I really like. I've flown this one before. This is quite nice. This Constitution refit is really, really cool, and it's cool looking. Um, and, or the escort refit, basically. The one I'm going to get, except that's the Zen version of it. So you've got Zen versions of each ship. I, of course, am going to go with what the game gives us for free because we are cheap. So Saber, um, Rapier, or Ushan. Now we can change that in the ship layouts. We don't have to worry about that right now. Right now, all we have to worry about is which one we want to get. And we definitely want an escort. So we're going to have one Ensign Tactical. We're going to have one Lieutenant Tactical. We are going to have one Ensign Engineering, one Ensign Science. We're going to have one Engineering Console slot, two Tactical, one Science. It's quite balanced for a, uh, a very beginning level ship, quite balanced. Four weapons, three, aft one, base crew 50, very small ship. Turn rate though is 17, so you can see that this is a very, very, very maneuverable ship. Uh, device slots to shield modifier is 0.9, so really not even much of a shield modifier. The base hole is only 15,000. I think we were at 10,000 on that other cruiser, so we've only gone up about 5,000 hull. <laughs> not much. We do have our free starship requisition, so let's use it by our escort. The Angers, <laughs> which I'm going to definitely change, re rename. So the first thing that I like to do, there is a new system in place that if I automatically equipped this new ship, it would change all my gear over. But I'm just going to do it manually just so that I know what I'm using and everything. I like to do that anyway. Uh, just because I like to be in control of what's on my ships and what I'm using. I like to know what's there. So I'm going to move everything off my ship. I wish there was like a move all to inventory option or something. Okay, so that moves everything off my ship. So this ship is stripped down and ready to be replaced as the primary ship. So now we hop over to the ship selector and you'll notice my promotion thing went away. I finished it. All I had to do was buy that ship and uh, now my promotion is over. I am technically now a Lieutenant Commander 10. I am I'm done with that promotion. So we're going to select the Angers. We're going to ready the starship. That makes it the primary starship. And now we can come away from him. Hit U, go back to the uh, our ship, and now you'll see the Angers is our uh, new ship here. Now, this ship can support cannons, and cannons is what I would want to go with on this ship. In fact, that's what I'm going to make is a cannon build on this ship, and I can do that. So um, I don't, but I don't have cannons yet. You'll notice I don't have any cannons in my inventory, but this ship does come with dual cannons comes with phaser dual cannons mark two so i'm going to leave those on there so that we already have cannons on there and um because this is a starter ship and there's only like really three forward weapon slots until i get up to four forward weapon slots there's not a lot of um option here for 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 forward weaponry um, if I put cannons on here that would be fine but I think I will leave one beam on there just to give me a little better uh, direction on the arc, but I do have a better beam to put on there. I've got this phaser beam Mark II Uncommon. Crit D, I'm going to put that on there, so that's a little better, and I've got a better torpedo I can use. So I'm going to use that torpedo. I do have a better deflector dish. I do have a better impulse engine, and a better warp core, and a better shield, and... I guess I'll leave that phaser back there because this one's only Mark 1. I do have an engineering slot. I do have one phaser damage booster. This is my science shield regeneration rate. We'll put that there. 
see if I can use any of these. This is a photon projectile weapon damage, and I am using photon torpedoes. So I'll put that down there. That will increase my torpedo damage. So now I got one increasing my phaser damage, one increasing my torpedo damage. So that's quite nice. Um, so that, that, that will go away, that, that, and that will go away. Uh, this will go away. This will probably go away. I don't need the Batleth. I mean, all this stuff's going to be upgraded in time anyway. Now, this armor I could use on somebody. Here we go. Zarva, you are way behind and... No, wait, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That's shield. Armor, you got mark one, two, two, two... Uh, let's give uh, Flores the better armor. And then we'll replace Zarva's Mark 1 with this Mark 2. There we go. Instantly upgraded. So Flores is getting an upgrade. Uh, I'm going to keep with the weapons right now. I know they're only Mark 1, but I need to upgrade. But I guess I could do that after I sell some stuff. Remember, we are going to get rewards in each mission, but I like to be prepared before we start the mission. So your armor shields are good. I might upgrade everybody, because now we can do Mark IV. At this level, uh, level 10, once you get to 10 to 20, you can use up to Mark IV gear, Mark III and Mark IV gear. So I can upgrade everything to Mark IV. I'm going to upgrade their weapons to Mark IV, I think. And I'm going to upgrade my weapon to Mark IV, too. I'm going to have a Mark IV. Everything, everybody's going to have a Mark IV weapon. That's what we're going to do. So let's strip these weapons. I'm going to sell them for energy credits so I can have even more. And watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to give everybody Mark IV weapons. Including myself. We're all going to have Mark IV weapons. That'll make us a little better on ground here. Okay, let's go sell that stuff. We'll come back and do the ship stuff here. I mean, let me finish the ground stuff and get all that set up, and then we'll come back to the ship stuff. Boom, boom, let's go over here. Let's sell this stuff. Hello, personnel equipment. Sell, sell, sell. Sell, 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 sell. So look at that. I'm up to 10,000 energy credits. That's right. 10,000. So looting helps. Now I should have enough to buy at least Mark IV common weapons for everybody. That will be better than what I had before, even if they are common. And we'll try to give everybody like the same energy type just to keep it even for right now. Let's go to uh, personal equipment. Personal weapons. Let's choose Lieutenant Commander. Let's do common. Okay, good. See, these are pretty cheap, like 100 EC. Here's a Mark IV weapon for 100 EC. So pretty cheap. Let's do Mark four so we just get mark so we get just mark four weapons um look how cheap this stuff is so not bad at all i think i want to keep phaser though just so we can i don't want phaser stun pistols it starts to get really expensive okay well maybe we'll we can have different things a disruptor doesn't feel right though that's more cling on plasma doesn't feel right either Phaser feels right, but I don't want stun pistols. Isn't there a weapon vendor that I can actually just buy weapons from? Isn't that a thing I can do? Where do I go for that? I've not, like, ever just bought from the weapons vendor, but maybe this time I will, starting off here. Because, why not? Maybe it's fine. Is this where I come? The personnel equipment? I guess that would make sense. Probably from the same person I've been selling to. <laughs> I 
she can probably requisition me away team weapons. Check that out. Yeah, and their phaser. And they're cheap. They're not very expensive. So there you go. That's what I'm going to do. So I just got to decide what I want here. I'm going to say that I like... So we got an assault minigun, a full auto rifle. So it looks like she only sells odd level stuff. That means this is Mark 3, this is Mark 1, 3, 5, 7. She doesn't sell the even number stuff, which would be higher quality, but it's pretty cheap. And I can get the energy type I want here. I think I'm going to go with the split beam. I really like the split beam. And this is only a thousand energy credits, so I'm gonna just buy four of them. So it's gonna, well, all my characters will have the same phaser split beam rifle, Mark III. It's gonna cost me 4,000 energy credits, but it's gonna be worth it. We'll, we'll all be using the same weaponry, the same energy type, and for a decent price, that's not too bad. So, um, yeah, one, two, three. Four. Now we're back down to 6,000 energy credits, but I know that I'm going to get rewards in the next missions. I'm going to get rewards, I'm going to get more energy credits, so that's fine. This this is so that we can do a lot of damage on ground, because I know there's a lot of ground missions, and uh, just ensure that we can, you know, kill the enemy well. So everybody's getting the same weapon. We're all going to be on the same page. I like it. I don't like things being mixed up. I like, I guess it's a little bit of an OCD. I like things being the same. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everybody has the same stuff and that just makes me feel complete inside. I feel all right. Oh, you know what? I need five because I didn't count myself. I am stupid. Now I'm really down on the energy credits, but that's okay. I will earn more. Now at least, look at the better weaponry we have now. We all got Mark III phasers, so we are going to be doing some damage. Look at that thing. That is a gigantic beast. That is a huge weapon. I mean, somebody's compensating for size on that thing. That is gigantically long. Well, it's mine now, anyway. All right, um, I do still have some energy credits, but we're down to 5,000. I was gonna look and see what shields and armor cost. Let's see, equipment? Let's see what shields cost. Oh man, 1,000 energy credits for Mark III shields, and I just don't have it. Well, I do, but I would use up all my energy credits to get it, so I'm not gonna do that. Armor, also 1,000 apiece, so yeah, we're just going to stick with what we got until we get some more energy credits. I'm just going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with the armor and shields everybody's got. It's not the best, but again, we've got better weapons. So while I may not be able to take as much damage, uh, I will be able to deal that damage out and kill the enemy faster anyway. So all my bridge officers are well equipped now with that. Um, my kit... That is really something I could upgrade as well. Now that we're Lieutenant Commander 10, man, a new kit, excuse me, a new kit would be just wonderful. Uh, let's go to tactical frames. I think it's worth it to spend a thousand bucks here or a thousand energy credits on a, on a Mark III kit. I get two more module slots. I get a uh, strategic module slot and an assault module slot. And that's going to give me another ground power, which I could use. I'm going to spend a thousand energy credits to do that. So watch what happens. I'll take this module out. And now we're going to upgrade our tactical kit. Now I got two modules. I've got a strategic module slot and an assault module slot. So I will take this one, which is an assault module. I'll put it here. Now I have another power I can add. I've got a strategic module slot I can add. So let's see what she's got on strategic module slots, strategic modules here. Uh, kits, modules, strategic module. We've got suppressing fire two or rally cry, or a photon grenade three or smoke grenade. 
You know what? I want Rally Cry. Check this out. This is a team heal and crit buff. So again, we were talking about tactical powers are very buffy or debuffy. So this is a team heal and crit buff to foes. 20% chance to expose the foe within a 25 meter radius. Removes all exposed effects point, uh, plus 2.6 hit points for 15 seconds. Plus 10 all damage resistance. Plus 4 critical chance and plus 40 critical severity. So this is really, that combined with my target optics is really going to bump my critical chance and severity up quite a bit if I use those together. It's only 500 energy credits for that. So I'm going to use that new power. Now I've got a brand new tactical power. Isn't that awesome? So keep upgrading stuff like that, you see. It's very useful. Don't forget to upgrade your kits. And don't forget to hit P and put the power down here also. My photon grenade went away. And now I got Rally Cry. That should be all I have right now, yeah. So remember, Target Optics is also boosting Critical Severity and Critical Chance. But now Rally Cry is also going to boost Critical Chance and Critical Severity. My Critical Chance is going to go with a plus 4, plus, um, plus 2%, and then a plus 40, plus 20%. So I can hit that and then do that before I go into battle. And my crit chance and crit severity should be through the roof now. I don't know if there's a way to see that. Yeah, there is. 8.5%, 110%. Let's do it. Let's wait for that to cool down. We'll see what it was default and then we'll buff it. That's going to take a minute. We'll wait. Okay, so instantly now I have better ground powers. I got a better ground weapon and I got better ground powers. That was worth the energy credits. I'm down to 4,000. We're not gonna worry about my ship yet. Again, we need some more energy credits and we need some more money. Or more energy credits and more rewards, so we'll wait. I am gonna rename the ship. I don't know what to name it yet, so we'll wait. You guys, give me some suggestions maybe on what to name my ship next. How about that? It said a new trait opened up, so now I've got a new trait slot here as well. Uh, I have two ground, I have one space, Warp Theorist, so as, let's add another space to, um, to even it out here. Probably, probably accuracy. That's going to be important for an escort. Increases ship weapon accuracy. Space trait improves the accuracy of space weapons by plus 10%. Bada boom, bada bing. That's that's it. Uh, that's settled. That's it. That's what I need right there as an escort and tactical officer. Better accuracy. That's going to help me do more damage. So that's in the bag. Oh, stations. Yeah, we've got to fix our stations. And you'll notice... Uh, for a second there, I thought I didn't have enough bridge officers. I do because I have two tactical officers. Okay, the main one, you're going to be Eliza Flores. You're going to be Colas. You, of course, are Zarava and Tavrel. Now, I need to promote Eliza Flores, else her lieutenant commander power, or her lieutenant power, yeah, lieutenant, will not work. See, she's got beam array overload 2 here, but if I don't upgrade her, I won't have access to that power. I have to go promote her. And that costs expertise. Now she is a lieutenant. Now her power will work. Her power of beam overload 2 will work. I have uh, three tactical powers and two of them are the same. So I'm glad I saved some energy credits because I need to change those powers. I don't need two I don't need two high energy yield torpedoes. So let's go change the uh, bridge officer powers here on my ship. Remember, this is stuff you got to do, and a lot of people forget or don't realize they need to promote their bridge officers because their lieutenant powers will not be usable until you promote them. I'm going to promote everybody to a lieutenant because they got ground powers that also will not work until they are promoted so that's what you need to do you need to make sure to promote your bridge officers every time you rank up rank them up too just keep that in mind just do that every time you level up to a new grade you need to let them level up too 
Okay. Tactical space. Now, I have three tactical powers I can use here. Two of them are ensign. Uh, I definitely want tactical team as one of my space powers. This is an automated shield distribution and tactical buff. Does a lot of cool things, as you can see there. Uh, I like to have, you gotta have this, at least, at least one of these. I'm gonna buy that, well, wait a minute. Do I have tactical team on any of these? Got high yield and high yield, so that would be a no. So I do need to train. I'm gonna train Eliza Flores and tactical team one. Eliza Flores, skills, you are going to get tactical team one. Then I'm going to go to stations and I'm going to select tactical team one. Now you have tactical team one as your primary power on Ensign. Excellent. Now for your lieutenant power, what do we have for lieutenant power here? We've got tactical team two, torpedo high yield two, Torpedo spread to beam fire at will, beam overload to target subsystem auxiliary, target subsystem engine, shields, weapons. Is that a. That's a lieutenant power. Um, attack pattern beta one, delta one, cannon rapid fire. That's the one we're gonna go with, and I'll show you why. We have cannons on the ship, and we are going down that path. We are definitely gonna, ooh, that is 2,000 energy credits. That is a ton of my energy credits. And I am low on energy credits. I would only be able to buy one more thing. Okay, I'm gonna hold off. And the reason why I'm holding off is just simply because I don't have the energy credits. I do, but I would spend all of them, and I don't really wanna do that. Okay, I'm gonna continue using beam overload too. That'll still work or benefit my ship because I do have two beams on the ship so that's still a, a beneficial thing and I'll keep the torpedo high yield one and then the tachyon beam one and the emergency power to shields one I'm just gonna keep all of that right now but at least we changed that one power there so that's good now we come down here to their ground powers these need to be fixed too because she's going to use battle strategies target optics and then it looks like got two sweeping strikes here that's weird and then Zarva I just don't have the energy credits to really work with these powers yet I'm gonna have to wait for a couple of missions to get some more energy credits so that's what we're gonna do we're not gonna worry about their powers right now on ground we're just gonna go with what it gives me but that's only because I'm low on energy credits so I'll wait till we earn some more energy credits so that's all I'm going to do with the stations right now. That's the powers they're going to use. I know what I've got. I know what I need. This will work just fine for right now. You'll see. It'll be just fine. Uh, I added that extra trait. That'll help. Now we can add some more skill points as well. Um, I am using grenades. So adding something into grenade would help. I probably am going to keep grenades on this character. I'm probably going to upgrade my grenade types and stuff later on. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, put that point down there and ground on grenade. Sure. Now, up here in space, we've got some interesting choices to make. I'm not, I, I think driver coil would be a waste. I'm not going to use batteries. Hull repair is the only other option, but that's only going to help if I use engineering team, and I don't have engineering team. See, this skill improves all starship hull repair and healing abilities. This skill also improves the passive hull regeneration. Well, okay, I am in an escort. And hull regeneration, if my hull can regenerate faster, that'll be really beneficial for me. Because remember, I'm in an escort. It's going to take a lot of damage. It's, it's a glass cannon like we talked about. So I think hull repair is the first thing I need to go, I need to go in. So let's get that up there. Now my passive regeneration rate is higher at least. And now I'm maxed out. I can't put any more skills in until I get more skills. So that's that. For the first time, I've actually maxed out my skills. My skittles. Everybody's promoted. Everybody's got their powers. I got my powers. I think we're ready for combat. The next thing to do is to go into space and set up our ship.
Oh, we need to customize the look of it. That's right. Well, I can go ahead and set the hotbar options before we customize it. This is what it looks like by default. But I can make it look better. That's what it looks like. Look how fast it turns. That is so much better than the cruiser I had. It's so much better. Okay, um... Yeah, let us do my buttons the way I want them down here. Let's just drag everything off and start over. Clean slate. Everything has gone in weird places. Let's keep some symmetry to this thing. I like to have attack pattern alpha. Beam rate overload. I'll put the trade fighter down here in case I need it. Distribute shield power, power to shield, evasive maneuver, full impulse I don't need a button for, tachyon beam, tachy, um, tactical, torpedo high yield. Well, I got a lot of tactical powers, look at all that, a lot of red building up. <laughs> okay, that's all my buttons. Now this thing is... My weapons, I'll put them all on auto fire, right click auto fire, excellent. No, oh I forgot I had turned that off and I need to turn it back, I turned it off, I need to turn it back on. Uh, where is fleet, allow fleet invitations off. There we go. Alright, um, so everything is set up there. Let's go customize the look and then we'll come back in space and look at it. I can make this ship look so much better. It's not bad looking now, but I can make it look better. This is the part I really love. I wish there was more customization. Because I love customizing. Love, love, love. Love to customize. Customize Starship. Yeah, that is just plain Jane. That is nothing. Now we got different templates. Gladius. But that costs Zen, so forget that. Rapier. So that's the look of the rapier. Saber. Ushan. Ooh, I love the looks of that one. That is definitely the look to go with right there. But let's see if customizing gets us anything. We can customize the saucer, the hull, and the nacelles. Let's start with the saber. That's what we started with. Saucer. We can change to... Rapier, Saber, Rushan. I mean, that just looks incredibly awesome, doesn't it? The Hull, Rapier, Saber, or Ushan. I don't like the way this sticks up here. That gives it more of an elongated feel. A little bit fatter in the back, but <laughs> kind of interesting. That's different anyway. It's going to be a different design. Let's see what we can do with the nacelles. Rapier. Oh, that is weird. Look how they're. Look how the nacelles are positioned. <laughs> that is kind of interesting but weird at the same time that is that is i don't know if i like that rapier saber or the ushan a saber kind of flares them out i like the flared out in the cells i mean that's a cool look <laughs> boy that is different Let's see what the Ushan nacelles, the they're definitely hanging down there. I kind of like 
Ushan Saber Saber. That definitely is different. I definitely like the uh, saucer of that. Definitely sold on that. Definitely... Don't like that. So it's either the Sabre or the Ushan. I kinda like that. Makes it look more longer. Fat in the back though. I like the flared out nacelles. I like that nacelle. I look the I like the look of that nacelle, but I wish it were flared out like that nacelle. See what I'm saying? I want that but flared out. But because I elongated the back of the thing. I think the nacelles need to be longer to accommodate that look. So we'll stick with those nacelles. I really like the look of those nacelles anyway. Okay, that's our look. An Ushan Saber Ushan. And we're going to take away the pattern because I'm just going to choose that unique looking skin. So no pattern and we're going to go with the small origin bridge. And we're going to go with the I'm gonna go with that window because I like these little patch thingies here. Now let's see what we got with the material. We got six material types. I'm surprised. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is bright. I mean white, like really bright white. But this is the new fifth one that's kind of unique looking. I think I'm going to try this one. We might go to that white one, but I think this looks pretty cool. Let's choose this. And let's take a look at it. I think this is a good looking ship. Yeah, that looks really good. That has a nice look to it, much better than what we had before. I like this a lot. This is it, this is our new ship. That looks pretty unique. That is unique, that is really cool looking. Oh man, I like this a lot. I can't wait to see this thing in battle. This is going to be nice. Alright, so we got Tactical Team. Bam. We got Attack Pattern Alpha. Bam. We've got Beam Overload. Bam. We got my Tachyon. Actually, I'm going to switch these around. Actually, I think I'll put that before. Got Tachyon and we got my High Yield. We got the shields, which we're gonna need. We got that. We got evasive maneuvers. We got all power to weapons. We, I think we are set up pretty well. And this ship does not look half bad. You gotta admit, guys, that looks pretty cool, huh? That does, it does, I know it does. <laughs> That's pretty slick. All right, I can't wait to show this in battle and get to, get to do this, all right. So the next mission will be Research or Rescue. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. This is going to be a lot of fun.